Hi, this is Mike Levine for Electronic Musician. In this video, we're going to look at Harrison Mixbus 3, the latest version of the DAW from Harrison Consoles that's designed to replicate an analog workflow in a digital environment. So let's check it out. Let's start by looking at the Mixbus interface. There are two main work areas, the editor and the mixer. Here in the editor is where you record audio or MIDI, and Mixbus also has a suite of editing tools that you can use to manipulate what you've recorded. I've got a session opened here, and I'm going to show you the features by kind of going through the session a little bit uh, in an abbreviated manner. I just imported in a drum loop. Now, my session's at 122 BPM and the loop's at 120. So as you can see, it doesn't totally line up with the bar line, but no problem. I'll go into stretch mode by pressing T or selecting this button. And now I can time stretch the loop to the right length. And I have the uh, grid set on bars, so it just snaps right to the grid. Okay, now I'm gonna copy it a few times. Okay, now I'm going to record a MIDI bass part. I've already added to the session a MIDI track, and I inserted the Sonovox Instrument Dynamic Acoustic Bass on it. So I'm going to record a short bass part with it. As you can see, the MIDI notes show up right in the track. If I press the E key, I turn on internal edit mode, and now I can audition and edit the MIDI notes. I'll get rid of that bad one at the end there. Really simple. And from here, you can do all sorts of other MIDI editing, including changing note length and quantizing and transposing and so forth. Okay, now I'll record an audio track, and that'll be the rhythm guitar. Now, if I switch over to the mixer, I can set the input for this track, make sure it's set correctly. And by the way, in the mixer, you have the option of using the Mixbus uh, monitoring section, which has quite a bit of functionality, as you can see here. Okay, if I want to see my levels even more clearly, I can open up this floating meter bridge window, which gives you a really nice look at them. Okay, now I'm going to record the rhythm guitar track. I already set up two channels of guitar, both using different patches from Positive Grid's Bias FX software. Okay, finally I'll record a quick lead guitar track. So now let's move over to the mixer because this is where things really get interesting with mix bus. On the left side, you'll see the channel strips and on the right, the mix buses. Conceptually, mix bus aims to make the workflow more console-like and one of the ways they do it is by putting both EQ and compression into each channel strip. You get eight buses in each session and you can use them as subgroups by simply assigning a track to them with one of these buttons here. And as you can see, I've renamed some of them or you can use them as uh, effect sends because they have volume knobs, so you could just dial in a little bit into the effect if you wanted to do it that way. So I'm gonna assign my tracks to buses, and obviously this would be more significant in a larger session where I'd have big subgroups, but even with this few tracks, I have a reason why I want different tracks on different buses. And that reason is that the buses have on them a drive control, which is a tape saturation effect, and you can dial that in individually from each bus. There's also one on the master bus. Okay, but first let's deal with the channel strips. Here at the top it shows uh, input and it shows the effects already in the channel strip, which are EQ and compressor. Those are in by default. I could also open other Mixbus plugins or third-party plugins from here. But for EQing and compressing, I really like what Mixbus has built in. 
you see the EQ here, three bands plus a high pass filter. And each channel strip also has the compressor threshold and input trim and a makeup gain control all right next to each other, which makes it very convenient when you're adjusting gain staging. There's also a knob that's either attack, release, or ratio, depending on the compressor algorithm you've selected. So let's start with the drums. I'm going to add a little bit of compression to them. The compressor defaults to a setting called leveler, but it also has two others, compressor and limiter, and they all have slightly different adjustable parameters and behaviors. But uh, the basic bread and butter one is the leveler, and uh, I'm going to use that here. By the way, the buses also have a compressor, and on those, there's an extra choice, which is sidechain. So that opens up a lot of other possibilities. Okay, so now I'm going to solo the drums, and I want to put a little compression on them. So I will move the threshold by dragging this slider here until I get what I want. Okay, now let's go over to the mix buses. I can add drive from an individual bus, but I can also add it globally from the master bus. But in this case, I'm adding it right from the uh, individual uh, bus that I've assigned the drums to. You can hear how it affects the sound. And now the guitars, uh, I'm going to give them some drive as well. And maybe even on the master, the, the master bus uh, tape saturation is designed to recreate the effect of mixing down to analog tape. And by the way, you can also add some additional EQ on the buses and the master. Um, according to Harrison, these three bands that you get on those channels are set at frequencies that tend to be troublesome in a mix. Mix Bus 3 also has you covered for metering. You get a stereo correlation meter here, and that lets you check mono compatibility and the width of your mix. You also get a K14 loudness meter to check the level of your mix, the overall loudness of your mix, which is very helpful. And there's also a tape saturation meter, not only on the master bus, but on the individual buses. Once I have the mix the way I like it, I can export it in a wide variety of formats. Take a look here. Not only that, I can export individual stems. So those are just some of the features in Harrison Mix Bus 3. We really just scratched the surface in this video, but I think you get the idea. It does an excellent job of replicating an analog workflow. And not only that, it sounds great. This is Mike Levine for Electronic Musician. Thanks for watching.